Now we move to our questions from the moderators this morning, from our reporters, and uh, just to give you an idea of how this will work, in an effort to rotate who gets the first response to the questions, we'll start at the far right end of the dais. Uh, Mr. August will get the first response, we'll move down, and then the next question, Mr. Kovac, and so on and so forth, just to retain some, some order in that respect. Our first question this morning comes from WDEL's Alan Ludell. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, both President Obama and ex-Governor Romney have indicated lines beyond which they would not allow Iran to go with its nuclear program. Two-part question, would you consider such a war a war of necessity? And given the likelihood of skyrocketing oil prices as a result, are you prepared to tell Delawareans that this war is worth perhaps the highest gasoline prices we have ever paid? For the Green and Libertarian uh, candidates, you can uh, come off that the way you wish. Mr. August, I believe, is first. All right. Uh, first off, um, the war, the issue of the red line in the sand and the war, Iran has a right to nuclear power. They're, they are a part of, they are, they're a signee of the Nuclear Proliferation Treaty. So when I hear the, uh, the red line and the red sand talk, it means nuclear war. It means mutually assured destruction for everybody on the planet. There have been studies done what a nuclear attack on any facility on Iran would, would cause. It would cause immediately 13 million deaths. That's a study done by a unit concerned scientist. Now, as for the price of oil and the price of oil going up because of a war, I, I find that a pretty ridiculous question to put such a, an, an inhumane value of that. Life is much more, and war is not worth oil. All right, very good. Uh, Mr. Kovac, your response. Alan, you posed a question about war. I think we need to focus on avoiding that war. And we need to avoid that war through clear and distinct policy and by firmly and cohesively standing by and up with our allies, especially and specifically Iran, uh, excuse me, uh, Israel, against Iran, against the nuclear threat that is Iran. What we have is a situation where we are not controlling the outcome. Mr. August talks about, you know, their right, and it's their right under that plan of uh, supposed to start a war, to start that nuclear war. We have to make sure that Iran does not have the capability to launch a nuclear attack against our allies, against the rest of the world, to start that war. We must make sure and do all that we can do by standing with our ally Israel to make sure that that doesn't happen, that Iran never develops the capability of developing that nuclear arsenal and we must do a better job of making our policy clear. Thank you, Mr. Kovac. Mr. Carney. Bottom line is the U.S. can't allow Iran to get nuclear weapons capability. Uh, the President made that very clear the other night, and I support the President's plan that containment is no option. In fact, I sp uh, sponsored it and, and supported a, a resolution in the Congress to do just that. That's also why I voted for the strictest uh, economic sanctions uh, in history, and they're having a big impact. The president said just the other night that Iran's economy has collapsed and oil exports are, are at their lowest level in the last 20 years. It appears that the Iran Iranians are indicating a willingness to talk directly to the United States. We ought to accept that if that's actually what's happening. The administration has denied that that's, uh, that's underway. Uh, we need to back up our, our friend and ally in the region, Israel. We need to be on the same page, and we are in terms of intelligence. We need to make sure that the Iranians don't get the nuclear weapons capability, and we need to term, stand firm with our friend Israel. Mr. Gesty, the time is yours. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to caution us to link economic ramifications and war together. Yes, they are linked, but we should never make a decision to go to war based upon what it will do to our economy. Uh, war is a serious business. As, as Mr. August said, many, many people are going to die. Uh, we should never go to war without a declaration of war. Yes, we should be prepared to defend ourselves, but if we are not attacked, uh, we, we should not saber rattle and you know, get into these entanglements overseas that cost lives and, and, and billions of dollars. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with um, you know, standing with Israel and backing them up, but we have to be very careful with how we do it. We can support them with logistics, we can support them with arms, but we cannot get involved in another war putting boots on the ground with a country that can't even you know, make their own gasoline. So we have to be very cautious in this approach. No war without a declaration of war. 